Hello, welcome to Jason the Old Millennial. My name is Jason. Speaking to you here in my basement in this great state of Kansas. And today's video, I am showing off some new vinyl and CDs that I bought recently, anyways. So, yeah, just tune in to see what I bought here on Jason the Old Millennial. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's doing great here on a Monday. And, uh, I uh, bought some fairly new uh, vinyl and CDs. Uh, the vinyl especially just came in this last weekend. So I just now listened to uh, my new vinyl just the other day, which was always enjoy getting new vinyl and listening to it on my record player. And I uh, also had two CDs I bought pretty recently in the last month or so uh, that I haven't shown on the YouTube channel yet that I thought I'd show and just give some quick thoughts about. Uh, first one, uh, I kind of showed it on uh, my uh, live stream, uh, the Eagles. Um, we got uh, two CDs here, the, uh, their greatest hits, uh, 1971 and 1975. And then the other side is uh, uh, Eagles Greatest Hits, Volume 2. It's kind of strange. You got the, not Volume 1, Volume 2, but there's uh, kind of the greatest hits. And then they came up with another one, I guess, and called it Volume 2. I definitely love this uh, cover and everything on it. Like I said, you got, oh, there we go, same thing there. Um, I showed this a little bit on my uh, 10 Greatest American Bands. I had uh, the Eagles as my number one favorite American band uh, on there. And uh, yeah, so a huge fan of the Eagles. Um, don't have any of the records yet, but I saw this at Walmart. And it was like 10 bucks for this or something, which is a better price than having to pay for vinyl, which is, you know, like, 30 bucks, you know, at least. Uh, but yeah, uh, this first one, man, this is like, this is definitely like, every song is like a killer song. Uh, the only song I don't like, actually, there's 10 songs on here on this first disc. The only song I'm not crazy about is Witchy Woman. I don't know why, I've just never been a big fan of that one. But the other nine are just some of the best songs ever. I mean, Take It Easy, um, one of these nights, uh, peaceful, easy feeling, best of my love, tequila sunrise, uh, all the early kind of big hit songs from the Eagles. And like I said in my video about the ten American bands, of course, love the Eagles for their great harmonies. They have a nice, easy going feeling. A lot of times, they can also rock it. They have uh, amazing guitar players. Um, uh, I know and they got some different guitar players during their career. Uh, I don't know on this one. I don't know if Joe Walsh is in on any of these, and also John Fielder. Uh, they might have came just after these uh, greatest hits of the year. So, but uh, overall, great musicianship. Um, but love uh, songs like "Best of My Love," "Take It Easy," "Peaceful Easy Feeling," "Tequila Sunrise." I mean, they're just these great sit back and enjoy songs. Just close your eyes and just enjoy the music. Um, you know, you want to sit down on a blanket or something out outside on the on the grass and enjoy the sunlight. Uh, volume 2 uh, has one of my favorite songs. There's Hotel California. I absolutely love that song. I talked about the album already on my top 100 favorite albums. Uh, love the double guitar solo at the end. It's one of my favorite guitar solos. Uh, so I've always been a big fan of that one. It's a little not an easygoing one. It's a little more of a rocker for them. Uh, which I said, I like more the easygoing probably. But yeah, um, I especially loved, uh, there's a, let's see. Seven Bridges Road, it's like a live version, and man, the harmonies are amazing. They and they do it like acapella. They start the song acapella, harmony. I mean, I love the beginning of that song, Seven Bridges Road. It's one I'm not familiar with until I was listening to this. I was like, man, that's that's a really cool song to listen to. But yeah, uh, yeah, just great. Uh, I'd say when I, there's debates, I think, on compilation albums. I, I hear some people say they don't like compilation albums. Uh, they just want the real uh, or the actual, they like the actual albums themselves and collecting those. Uh, and they don't like the compilation ones because, you know, I think fun for a lot of people for albums are you have some big hits and then you have some filler songs, you know, and the album is something, you know, that each song is created for that album and each song kind of plays into the overall of that album. And I think people like that about albums. Instead of just hitting one great hit after another off of different albums, uh, I guess they don't feel like it's a full album uh, in a way. I don't know how to explain that, but yeah, I can understand that. 
But I do like compilation stuff. I do like buying that because I do love hearing all the big hits of that band if I really like them. Uh, you know, so I do get those, um, or I am getting those along with actual albums. But um, I was going to say, uh, oh, when I look at a compilation album, my main thing is I look at, you know, I definitely have a set of songs that I have to have on there. I always think, I look at it and I look at the back, you know, what songs are on? I have to know, like, what songs are on this compilation album or Grace Hits album. And if it hits all the ones that I love, then I'm like, okay, I'm getting it. There's been some cases where I look at one and there's like, I'm thinking there's a song I really want on this album. And it's not on there. I'm like, I can't get it because you have to have this song to make it a Grace Hits album. I would say the only two songs on here that I really love that aren't on here, um, uh, Love Will Keep Us Alive, which I think was a much later Eagles hit is one I really enjoy. And also uh, there's like this uh, Hole in the World Tonight, uh, which I think came after maybe 9-11. Uh, so it's a later hit song of theirs I really enjoy that I've heard. But that's okay. Everything else is great on there. Second CD I bought recently is Bad Out of Hell by Meatloaf. Uh, songs by Jim Steinman. There. Good old Meatloaf. Um... Yeah, I really love this album. Uh, I haven't talked about it yet on my top 100 favorite albums. It's uh, pretty high on my list, actually. Uh, so I eventually get to this album, talk more about how I love it. But um, it's only seven songs, but yeah, a lot of songs are like 10 minutes long. So it's still 46 minutes when I listened to it the other day. Um, but I mean, you got three killer songs with uh, Paradise by the Dashboard Light. I absolutely love that song. Uh, Two Out of Three Ain't Bad. And um, you took the words right out of my mouth. They're just three, to me, really, really great songs. Uh, and when you only have seven songs, uh, you definitely need them all to work. You don't have much room to have a bad song in there. And I actually kind of enjoy all the songs. All Revved Up, No Place to Go is kind of an underrated song to me. It's pretty, I think it's pretty good up there with the other ones. Uh, Battle of Hell is fine. It has two kind of uh, ballads, Heaven Can Wait and For Crying Out Loud. Actually, pretty nice ballads on here. Um, but yeah, I, I like really like the sound of a, it's an interesting it's much kind of unique album uh meatloaf he's it's kind of a it's a rock opera sounding album i mean and the piano is just absolutely amazing it's just i mean it's a really great rock piano to it and a lot of good rock guitar to it also but um he uh meatloaf of course we had a broadway uh background he's a broadway singer actor who kind of auditioned for this album that jim steinman wrote this album and uh and so when you listen to it, it almost plays like a rock opera more than a, an actual album. Like you, you, you can picture yourself. And if you watch the videos, of course, you picture, you know, this is a, almost like a play, a musical, you know, which I, I kind of enjoy. And uh, um, Meatloaf has kind of like that um, Broadway sound to him that I kind of like and uh, mix them with rock music. I don't know, just a unique uh, album that I really enjoy all the songs on there. Uh, like I said, only seven songs, so you really have to hit on each one. But yeah, I, I like Meatloaf. Um, he just passed away this last year, in fact. So uh, it's nice getting that album. Now to my vinyl. I got two Beatle vinyls, actually. Uh, I got Please Please Me, the very first uh, album that I made in the UK. Of course, we didn't get to th get this in the US. Uh, this was a UK thing until finally they uh, made it for everybody. Uh, came out, what, 1963, I believe, the first album. Um, let's see the back. Not much there. A lot of writing on there. Uh, I do. It's, it's a simple photo. The only thing I, I really like about this, because I don't see on either, any other Beatles album, I don't believe, is the Please Please Me uh, with Love Me Do and 12 other songs. I know that's that's so odd that they added that there and just didn't have, you know, Please Please Me, the name of the album. And that's usually what you do on albums. But here it's telling us, oh, yeah, it has Love Me Do and other songs on here. OK, I, I figured there was other songs. You'd have to tell me that. But. I can look in the back and see what songs are in here. Maybe you couldn't back then. I don't know. I do kind of like that. It's a good 60s feel to me. Like, I don't think you do that in albums anymore. I don't know. That's probably a fad they used to do back then, I'm guessing. Uh, but yeah, of course, yeah, I love, I want to get all the Beatles on vinyl is what I'd love to do. Uh, so I'm kind of getting that collection going. Because uh, I already have a Revolver, um, Rubber Soul, uh, Let It Be on vinyl. Um, and now I picked up two more, so I got five in total, I believe, uh, of the Beatles. The hardest one, I think, is going to be the White Album, because that's going to be expensive vinyl. It's kind of, like, I think it's like $50 if I looked it up. 
So that's quite a bit of money put out for uh, for an album. But yeah, part of me is like, ah, I'd love to get all the Beatles on vinyl. That'd be so, that'd be so cool. Hopefully, I can do that. Um, but yeah, it's a really solid album. I talked about it already on my hundred favorite albums. It was on there. I mean, not super high. Uh, it's it's. I still really enjoy the album. Um, it's it's of course the first album, so it's like the really good early Beatles album, uh, Beatles songs. You know, of course, a lot of um, uh, cover songs, but the cover songs I think are really actually good on here, and that really helps the album out because I think the cover songs are way better on here than uh, like with uh, well Beatles for Sale for sure, and with the Beatles even I think this has the best cover songs on it, which really helped the album. Uh, you know, you have cover songs like "Anna Go to Him" I really love. I just I was just I was just listening to this album the other day, and I was like, man, "Anna Go to Him" I really like that song. Um, "Chain's Not a Bad Song." Uh, Baby It's You, I really enjoy. I've always really liked that song. Uh, then Twist and Shout is uh, one of my, it's my favorite cover song of theirs. And uh, what a great rock song to end the album. Uh, actually has a pretty good uh, side one, side two, fi uh, start and finish with, you know, starts with I Saw Her Standing There, which is uh, also a great opener. I know Sam St. John says this is his favorite opener of all time, at least for Beatles, because, you know, uh, you do love hearing the Paul one two three four, you know, like that's a great way to start an album. Uh, then the end of side one is "Please Please Me," which is uh, probably my second favorite song on this album. I, I love that song. Uh, and then side two it starts with "Love Me Do," which isn't necessarily a favorite of mine, but it was obviously their first big hit, so it's a iconic song. It's a very important song to them, so it's not bad. I mean, you, you're. You're ending side one with your biggest hit, basically, Please Please Me, uh, which the name of the album was also their first number one hit. And I think it was, yeah, it was their big hit at the time. That's why they came up with this album, because they they had two uh, hits, one real big one with Please Please Me. So they end with their biggest hit, Please Please Me. And then they start side two with their other hit, Love Me Do. So, I mean, it was great to hear those two hits back to back. Uh, and then the end with Twist and Child, like I said, uh, one of the best enders, I think, to a uh, Beatles album overall so yeah very well done put together i think um but yeah i enjoy all the uh beatles stuff like misery i think i enjoy quite a bit um ps i love you i like um do you want to know a secret uh i think it's really good um the only downers i think is boys and a taste of honey which are two cover songs i think are they're definitely the worst ones on the album uh overall i mean you're I listen to that and you think of those early Beatles uh, tunes, you know, uh, definitely different than their later songs. I would say I like their later stuff better, but it's still fun to listen to the early stuff. All right, last uh, vinyl album I'm going to talk about, one of my favorite all time, is Help. You got the Beatles, not uh, spelling out Help. <laughs> I forget what they spell out. They spell something else out, but uh, Help was too hard, I guess, to do on there, but... Yeah, that was the idea, I think, is that it's supposed to be like, yeah, help is four letters long. Uh, the Beatles are four members, so I think it was the idea. And here we got pictures of George wearing a hat. I never usually see him wearing a hat, but uh, I try to get the glare off there. But yeah, pretty simple white background, but still kind of an iconic picture of the Beatles help. Uh, yeah, definitely one of my favorite. I was listening to this. Man, I love this album so much. Uh, another great, uh, yeah, start with help. Great song. Um well, the last song on side one is Ticket to Ride. So, I mean, man, help start with help, end with Ticket to Ride on side one. Absolutely amazing. Love the love that. Side two, not as good because it begins with Act Naturally, which actually I like that song. It's one of maybe weaker songs on the album. I still really like it. Um, Ringo always has like my worst song usually on an album uh, early on or pretty much always. But uh, this is the first time I'm like, I actually like this song. And then it ends with Dizzy Miss Lizzy, which is my least favorite probably song on here. In fact, Act Naturally and Dizzy Miss Lizzy are the two cover songs. Now, think about it. So they begin and end with the two, the two only two cover songs on the album that are on side two. So side one's all Lynn McCartney uh, and George Harrison songs, uh, which makes side one or like one of the best sides ever put together. Um, I mean, you've got to hide your love away. One of my favorite Beatle tunes. Absolutely love it. Uh, You're Gonna Lose That Girl is like an underrated song to me. I really love that song. And, uh, you know, Another Girl is great. I Need You is a really good, Harrison's like first really good uh, song, I think. Um, I Need You, I really enjoy. So yeah, side one, absolutely amazing. I mean, 
Uh, Side 2 then has, like, my favorite song of all time, Yesterday, which, if they ended the album on Yesterday, that would have been, like, the perfect ender for an album, Yesterday, and just go, you know, drop the mic, we're the greatest band of all time. <laughs> I mean, we already were, but, man, after hear Yesterday, you're like, yep, that's a drop mic moment, like, yep, we're the greatest. I mean, who writes a song like Yesterday? I mean, absolutely amazing, beautiful, beautiful song. Anyway, so, of course, that really helps it being one of my favorite albums having that but yeah it's got some of my favorite Beatle album songs of all time like i said already anyway so yeah it's such a joy i'm really happy to get this and uh add it to my beatles collection and uh look forward to getting some more i love the parlor phone i do love the uh you got the parlor phone in the middle i don't know that's that's beatles for me when i see that i was like yeah all right good old parlor phone i don't know if it, you see it on other albums but i know that's a beatles thing Anyway, so yeah, very happy getting those and listening to those the other day. Always enjoy listening to some Beatle records. And of course, it's so fun listening on a record player. I, I really enjoy getting the record player and just feeling like old school 60s, listening to it the first time and trying to figure out what was that like, so hearing such great music. But anyway, so yeah, so that's my vinyl uh, and CD collection addition that I, um, I did recently. So feel free to comment what do you think about them uh do you have them yourselves i'm sure most of you do uh, a lot of those uh, that i've talked about anyway so yeah love to read the comments and just thank you to everybody for watching the video for liking it thank you to all the subscribers for supporting the channel i really appreciate you and have a good day